before you get started, you're going to need some distilled water for this experiment. And iodine stains, so protect your work surface with a tablecloth and wear old clothes or an apron. Keep pets and children away from your work area and wear pants and closed-toed shoes. And always wear goggles. Setting up. You get gloves with your lab kit, so you may as well wear them. It's a good idea to label everything before you get started. So flask number one, number two. You're gonna be making two dilute solutions in these 100 milliliter plastic beakers. You wanna label your graduated cylinders so they don't get contaminated. The third one is for water. Label your plastic pipettes also, so you can have dedicated pipettes and not get them contaminated. Here are the two reagents you're gonna be using. You may wanna label some extra beakers for waste and for distilled water. Have some paper towels ready for sure. So I'm just going to get some distilled water here because um, we're going to be using it throughout this experiment so it's good to have it in a small container. So you're going to be given a piece of tubing which is 24 inches long and you want to cut it in half so you have two 12 inch pieces. Then you're going to connect the tubing to the smaller end of the glass tubing that comes out of the stopper. Be really careful when you do this. You don't want to force it on there because the glass is very delicate and you may break it. So. Be really careful and patient when you put it on there. You also don't want it to fall off during the experiment, so try to get it on there snugly. In general, just be really careful when you're handling these stoppers with the glass tubing. Okay, so you should have uh, a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder that you're gonna put some water in. They say 10 milliliters, but it really doesn't matter because you're gonna start your timer at whatever volume you're reading. So just something close to 10. It doesn't have to be exact. Okay, so I've put about 10 milliliters in there and now I need to put about 200 milliliters in flask number two. This also doesn't have to be exact, so you can use the markings that are on the flask, which we don't normally do when we're measuring volumes. But this volume really doesn't matter. When you put the stoppers back in, be careful, but you want it to be snug, okay? Because you don't want any leaks happening during the course of your reaction. So recheck all of the tubing, put the end into the graduated cylinder, and now you're ready to prepare your dilute solutions. So get your beakers that you labeled, I'm going to put a paper towel under this. So for the dilute iodine potassium iodide solution, I'm gonna get my labeled beaker and my graduated cylinder and my labeled pipette. The instructions say pipette, but really what you're gonna do is you're just using a plastic pipette to add five milliliters to the graduated cylinder. 
In reality, this is different than pipetting. Hold the graduated cylinder to your eye, not right up to your eye, but at eye level, <laughs> so you can see the meniscus and make sure that you're accurately measuring five milliliters. Be sure to put the cap on when you're done because you don't want to knock this over. It's a messy. All right, get the graduated cylinder that you're going to use for your distilled water. You're going to put five milliliters of distilled water into your graduated cylinder. And then you'll add them both to the beaker and this will make your dilute, uh, basically iodide solution. What this solution is, uh, the reagent is iodine potassium iodide. So it's potassium iodide, but instead of water being the solvent, it's iodine. Which is why it has such a dark color. Swirl it to mix, and then put that aside somewhere where it's not going to spill. Now you're ready to prepare your dilute hydrogen peroxide solution. So make sure you get your dedicated pipette and graduated cylinder. Now here they want you to put 15 milliliters of the hydrogen peroxide solution. So you're gonna have to measure out 10 first, add it, and then add five later. That's 10. And they want us to add five more. Once you've got your hydrogen peroxide in there, All you've got to do is measure out five milliliters of distilled water and add that to the beaker. This is why it's good to have everything labeled ahead of time so you don't accidentally grab the wrong beaker or graduated cylinder and contaminate it by putting the wrong solution in it. I'm pouring the distilled water back into my hydrogen peroxide graduated cylinder just to rinse any remaining droplets that are left. Once you add the water, swirl your solution to mix it and you're done. In run number one, you're gonna be mixing five milliliters of undiluted hydrogen peroxide with 10 milliliters of undiluted iodine potassium iodide solution. So for this one, we're gonna be using our uh, reagents as they came with our kits. Um, you wanna use five milliliters of your hydrogen peroxide solution. Always be sure to close the bottle when you're done. Next, you're supposed to use 10 milliliters of your iodine potassium iodide solution, but you're gonna see in a second that I actually made a mistake and used five milliliters instead. So 
so I had to redo this part. You're not given as many chemicals, so you're going to want to be really careful that you're following the instructions because if you put the wrong volume or the wrong solution, you may not have enough to redo it. So I'm putting the hydrogen peroxide solution in flask number one. Now I'm going to add the iodide solution. I'm going to put the stopper in, make sure that it's snug. Now the instructions say swirl it for three minutes and wait for a minute and it's going to take 20 minutes. That is not true. Oops, I spilled. Um, all you want to do is you want to swirl it until you start to see water being displaced from flask number two into the graduated cylinder. Once you see that water is quickly dropping into the graduated cylinder, pause for a second. The rate's gonna slow way down. And then just see if you think that there's a steady flow of drops going into the graduated cylinder. If so, you're ready to start your timer. If not, just swirl it a little bit more. So bubbles are forming, I can see, at the bottom of the glass tubing in flask number two. And that's because this reaction produces oxygen gas. So now I can see that water is going through the tube into the graduated cylinder. So now it's dropping vigorously, so I want to stop. I'm going to look at the volume and start my timer at the same time. And then I want to write down the time every time two milliliters of water is displaced. So if I start at 23 milliliters, then I want to write down the time at 25 and 27 and 29 milliliters. This is what it looks like. The whole thing for me took about seven minutes for this first run, but remember I had the wrong concentrations, so yours might be slightly different. So every two milliliters, just keep writing down the time until you get to 20 milliliters of water displaced. For run number two, we're gonna change up the concentration of iodide by adding 10 milliliters of diluted iodide solution. To clean up from the previous solution, you may want to dump out a little bit of the water, although the volume doesn't really matter and you should have enough space with a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder, but I'm going to pour out just a little bit so I'm closer to 10. Like I said, the original volume doesn't matter so much because as soon as the water starts dropping at a steady rate, you're going to start your timer and write down whatever your starting volume is. You don't need to add more water to flask number two, it should be fine. By the way, I'm going to show you a trick when your gloves are inside out and the fingers are all stuck like that. Flip it around until it forms a balloon, and then when you push on it, it'll blow all the fingers out. So you want to dump the reaction mixture into your waste container. This is why it's good to have one handy. And you're gonna wanna rinse it probably twice with some distilled water. You can see the yellow color left behind from the iodine solution that's left in the flask. Even though the directions say that the flask needs to be dry when you start, it's really hard to dry the inside of an Erlenmeyer flask because of its shape. So 
Try to get as much water out as possible, but don't worry if it's not perfectly dry. So for this one, once again, we're using our stock solution of hydrogen peroxide. We'll use five milliliters of this solution. Now we already prepared 10 milliliters of our diluted iodine potassium iodide solution, so all we need to do is just pour that in. So five milliliters of our stock hydrogen peroxide solution, and all 10 milliliters of our prepared diluted iodine potassium iodide solution. Then once again, carefully put the stopper back in, make sure that it's snug. And then you're gonna start swirling. This one's gonna take a little longer than the first one. You can see it's starting to bubble in the flask, uh, flask number two. Water is going up into the graduated cylinder. Okay, once the water stops or starts to drop vigorously, that's when you want to stop. Look at the volume, start your timer. And then every two milliliters that gets displaced beyond whatever volume you started at, you're gonna write the time down. Let's say this time it started at 25 milliliters. Then I would write down what the time is at 27, 29, etc. You can see that this one is slower than the first one, but don't worry, the whole thing still doesn't take too long. It took about 10 minutes for me to get through the final volume. So keep collecting times until you've displaced a total of 20 milliliters of water. In the last run, you'll be doing the same thing except you'll be using 5 milliliters of diluted hydrogen peroxide and 10 milliliters of undiluted iodine potassium iodide solution. For cleanup, Wash all waste down the sink with lots of water, but be careful because iodine can stain your sink, so try to pour it straight down the drain. Thoroughly rinse all your labware, dry it, and put it back in your lab kit box, and then clean your work surface with soap and water, and make sure you wash your hands thoroughly when you're done.